directional look and, if necessary, take a different direction. My Lords, it's a pleasure to follow the noble Earl of Caithness, uh, whose passion for improving the bill uh, from the government backbenches is evident even at this hour of the evening, and I commend him on that. Um, I should perhaps, before I speak, um, note my, uh, declare my um, role as Vice President both of the LGA and the NALC. Um, and I'm going to group uh, 1991 and 94. 90 appearing in the name of the Noble Lord Lord Kerslake, also signed by the Noble Lord Lord Oates, and uh, 94 signed by the Noble Lord Lord Oates and also by my noble friend Baroness Jones of Morscombe. Um, all of these are dealing with the fact that the people who know best about a local natural environment are going to be local people. And we confront again, as we do in so many different areas, the fact that the UK is an England in particular is one of the most centralised polities on this planet, um, and that has many negative effects for people, but it also has negative effects for nature. And if we come to the detail of these, um, Amendment 90, uh, as the Noble Lord, Lord Oates said, we keep giving local government responsibilities, but what we've seen through a decade of austerity is less and less resources being available in local communities to deal with those responsibilities. We've gone through a cycle where local authorities essentially have enough funds just barely to meet their statutory responsibilities, i.e. those dictated from here in Westminster, to the point where they don't even really have enough funds to do that, let alone to do any kind of um, it reflects local priorities, local desires for action. And I think the amendment signed by my noble friend Baroness Jones of Moscombe is particularly telling, and we can think of so many case studies. The noble Lord Lord Oates gave one. Um, I also was struck thinking about this of the case of the River Lug in Herefordshire last year, where um, we saw trees filled, the river dredged, a reprofiling of the river banks across along a um, 1.5 kilometre stretch to the absolute shock and horror of local people. Now, investigations are still ongoing, so I won't go too far into the depths of this. But how the country was alerted to this was through local people using social media, through the local media outlets picking up this story. Of course, it's at the local level that the knowledge was, was arose, um, and it was the local level perhaps some action could have, could have saved some biodiversity, some nature there. And I think of another case study. I was up in um, Kendal a few years ago uh, in a village that was struck by flooding. And the local people were just, I think, shaking with anger and frustration because there was a road that could they have closed that road? Um, the vehicles driving along it were pushing floodwaters into people's homes. Could they have closed the road? The local people could have stopped that flooding, those homes being flooded but they were told that they would face police action if they closed that road. That's the kind of thing that we need to ensure that local people are able to act in emergency situations, whether it's a biodiversity emergency or a flooding emergency affecting people's homes, as in that case. So I really hope we might see some progress on all of these 1991 and 94. But I do also just very briefly want to mention 92A in the name of the Noble Earl. Um, the Nature Friendly Farming Network um, represents a really activist group of farmers. Uh, I've met quite a number of them. They are doing some very strong things at that nexus between acknowledging the need to produce food but also to really look after nature. And I think here we have a, a very modest addition to the bill that would really acknowledge and put on the statute books recognition of important work and support for important work of, na of nature-friendly farming. Um, so I hope that we might also hear from the Minister on that amendment. 